Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Xenonauts 2, Early Access, Milestone 4. As today, as per usual, we've got a bunch of irons in the fire, a bunch of projects in the queue. So we're really just waiting for those to pop off, collect our incremental progress, try to stay one step ahead of that ever-steepening curve, or at least not fall too far behind it. And I will say, after giving it some thought, I think our next project is going to be the X-3 Dragonfly dropship. Uh, we really, really need to get to that base down in Latin America. We're at the point now where their panic is approaching 50, which we now know is the critical danger zone. That's the point where your, your funding drops below 100%. And we're already struggling enough with funding as it is. So yeah, that's the vague plan anyway. Though, you know, we may have to adjust depending on how things play out between now and then. So for now, our main goal is just to get out to day 200. That'll be the explosives. And then day 210. That'll be when we finish the dropship project. Which will also coincide with our next paycheck. So at that point, we will immediately put that funding towards building one of those new dropships. And of course, uh, we want to keep knocking these projects out as well. Since the faster we can finish them, the faster we can start selling those excess corpses. Yeah, sadly, uh, we are really getting to that point where the reduced funding from early Milestone 4 is really starting to hurt us. Since that's almost a million dollars that we've been deprived of in this particular run. Though again, uh, I mean, we're, we're hanging on for dear life, if just barely. If we can make it out to day 320, I think, I'll, uh, I'll consider that a win. That is technically the end of the current build. At which point we'll just assume this world is safe. Laser shotties in play. MG's three days out, but let's go ahead and get the shotguns equipped. Though one thing I am concerned about with these is the the drastically reduced ammo cap. So I think we need to start budgeting space for an extra mag for anyone who ends up with one of these new LAS weapons. And of course, weight is starting to become a serious issue now too. The extra mags, the uh, extra weight from the Guardian armor. I'm actually surprised there's no, there's no module or armor that helps a soldier carry more weight like an exosuit or, or strength-enhancing harness or something. But who knows? Uh, I mean, maybe there is something like that. Maybe we just haven't unlocked it yet. I have had several people telling me we really do need to, to do electronics. Maybe we'll do that one next, right after the dropship project. And we've got UFOs. And once again, another escalation. We've got interceptors, which I'm assuming are just juiced up fighters. And we've got an abductor right on top of Phoenix. My goodness. Can we auto? We can, but only if we're willing to lose our Phantom, which we are obviously not. I am assuming direct control. Let's make sure the Angel starts closer. We want the Abductor to focus on it first. Hit the turbo. Let's get you in there faster. Angel 2, switching off to decoy duty. Come on, Phantom. Careful.
and dodge. Oh, shoot, right. Yeah, yeah, can't, uh, can't dodge while the afterburners are running. Come on, Angel, let's get you back in close. not tearing this guy up nearly as fast as I would like. Uh, armor's out. Hull at 80. Let's try to adjust speed. Stay on him longer. Oof. Yeah. The main downside here, of course, being that uh, any projectiles it drops at this range will just immediately hit us. Hey, there we go. Nice. Got banged up a lot more than I would have liked, but uh, certainly better than the, the auto result. Though it does very much stress the importance of getting those other aircraft upgrades in play. Which, hopefully this salvage will help pay for. Though, one sec. Oh, wow, yeah. We are within hours of that project finishing. Let's go ahead and let that wrap. Elenium Explosives. Despite having vast amounts of energy stored inside its crystalline structure, Millennium is a remarkably stable substance. It will not detonate upon suffering a powerful physical impact, nor if subjected to high temperatures, nor even if set on fire. Given the imbeciles in our engineering department handle Millennium on a daily basis, no doubt showing it the same lack of respect they show their betters, I suspect we should all be grateful for this, but sadly, it does make weaponizing this stuff rather difficult. Nevertheless, I am equal to the task. Close analysis of the structure of Elenium reveals tiny vulnerabilities that are relatively simple to break open with a focused laser beam. Doing so causes a cascading failure of the atomic bonds holding the substance together, explosively releasing all of the energy trapped within. It therefore appears feasible to replace the explosives in everything from our battlefield hand grenades to the warheads of our air-to-air -air missiles with Elenium-based versions. These upgraded munitions would be capable of inflicting substantially greater damage than their predecessors. Of course, I am aware that blowing up a substance as valuable as Elenium appears a ludicrous waste of resources. Thankfully, this is not the case. The bulk of these explosives can be produced from relatively plentiful and otherwise useless, low-grade Elenium. However, a small amount of high-grade Elenium will still be required for the priming charges. While I believe this will be a worthwhile investment of our scarce resources, ultimately, the only judgment that matters is your own. Yeah, yeah, because that's really been working out for us so far. Well, I mean, we're alive. And, of course, it's broken up into a series of additional upgrades we have to pay for. Which, I suppose, isn't unexpected. Let's go ahead and get those dropships going. And let's have a look at these new projects. Elenium Grenades. 250k? 10 Elenium? Yeah, we can afford that. 20 hours. Wow, that is actually very tempting. I think we could actually do that before hitting that crash site. Though I would have to double check that. Then the vehicle upgrade we're not worried about. And air weapons, Elenium Warheads, 350k, which we can afford, but would take four days to complete. And we do not have sufficient funds to do both. Though we could do Elenium Grenades, and then theoretically salvage enough from that crash site to also do this. You know what? Give me a sec. I'm going to go crunch some numbers. And we're back. And yeah, yeah, we're going to go for it. 
turns out we have a day and change on that crash site. So if we're going in anyway, might as well do it with some new toys. Of course, that does also mean we now lack the funds to get this project started, but but that's fine, because as aforementioned, we should almost certainly salvage enough from the crash site to be able to afford it afterwards. So in theory, we'll still have the uh, upgraded missiles in play by day 205. And then I will also note, um, it turns out we do, we do actually have enough money to do the vehicle upgrade. We just have no reason to given that we have not actually built any vehicles thus far. Though, uh, that might change once we get the new dropships in play. And finally, uh, we will sadly not be able to bring the new laser machine guns into play. They take slightly too long to build, and then we'd have to transfer one over anyway. So that does put it outside our, our window of operation here. But yeah, yeah. So we're basically just waiting for tomorrow morning. Then we'll uh, then we'll clear this crash site. Though I suppose that does mean we might have to deal with more UFOs in the meantime. We're right at the onset of a new wave here. Actually, these guys are coming right towards us. Let's see if we can maybe intercept. We haven't actually fought these guys just yet, so I am curious to see how they stack up. Oh, yeah. Notice how they angled right into us as we got close. Can we auto? Oof. That is... Uh, wow, that's a big no. Well, this might have been a mistake, but... Uh, assuming direct control. Okay, okay. So they are fairly fragile. Minimal armor. About on par with the scout ships from early on, though I assume much more agile. We'll tuck Phantom 2 in right next to them. We'll immediately dodge roll and see if we can flank. And then Angel 4 will engage from a distance, drop its payload, then immediately turn and hopefully distract. But yeah, yeah, this, this might go bad quick. Fingers crossed. Here we go. Phantom 2 engaged. Misses out. First salvo hit. But Phantom also tagged. Come on, come on, come on. Shoot. Salvo 2 looks like it's about to whiff. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Interceptor one out. Oh, gosh, we are really cutting this close. Holy moly. OK, good. Yeah, that was uh, that was way more intense than I wanted it to be. But uh, we pulled through, if just barely. My goodness, look at that. So yeah, yeah, that is uh, definitely a warning not to take those guys lightly. But a uh, good show from the Angel. The missiles actually did make a difference there. The torpedo took down the first interceptor. Still, though, way, way too close. We, we really do need to up our air game with our non-existent funding. And, of course, no crash site since they were just glorified fighters. But we'll take it. We should also get a report once the uh, salvage op is complete. And there we go. Millennium Grenades Online. Millennium Charges. Okay, okay. Very, very modest damage bump. 30 to 32. More significant boost on armor destruction. Not as dramatic as I would have liked, but it's something. Millennium grenades. Slightly more significant. Uh, 35 to 50. 
but minimal movement on armor destruction, so essentially the exact opposite. And heavy Elenium rounds. Which I guess do 25% more damage. Is that reflected on our launcher or... 31 thermal. I feel like that's not reflected there, so in theory that would be... 39 damage now. We'll have to double check that once we're out in the field. I'm not 100% on that. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, okay. Again, not, not nearly as dramatic as I would have liked, but it is something. It's certainly better than what we had. Let's do some field testing. To those who are about to die, etc., etc. Oh, also, uh, we do have the new laser shotties as well. So that's another new toy to test. Though I will, I will admit, um, I did do a little off-screen uh, field testing for the LAS weapons before I committed to which ones we were going to build. That's what helped me settle on the shotties and the machine guns. Since, uh, ultimately, yeah, the the reduced ammo cap on the precision lasers was just too much. And we've got Reapers. I guess that's just the new normal when it comes to Seb ships. Speaking of which, Seb on left. And... Right seems relatively clear for the moment, though obviously we have so many blind spots here. It immediately makes me anxious. Reaper's too far out to pose an immediate threat, so we'll focus down the Seb. Nice, nice. Might have Reapers on left. We'll get random poised for it. Actually, can we just... I mean, LAS weapons do double terrain damage. Hey, look at that. Downside, of course, being that he is now not poised for Reapers. Also, uh, that was 25% of his battery charge. But, Seb out. Let's refocus. Again, Reaper's too far out to be an immediate threat. But we might have other, more immediate threats just out of view. So let's set up for that. No, that would leave him exposed from right. You know what, we'll just focus down the Reaper. There weren't civvies over there.
And hold. There's some civvies. Oh. Wow, we may have inadvertently tagged an unseen threat. Manted. Nice tag. Seb. Who sadly is not injured, so no. Wib did not tag them. Reaper prepping to bushwhack, so be wary of north. Which is fine, we've got a more immediate threat anyway. Soften. Thank you, Jay. Target capped. And let's clear corner. Just in case there's anything else hiding in there. Wow, Wiv, buddy. All right, let's get you covered. Focus down, Seb. Seb out. And prep for Reaper. Okay, hold. Seb. Hey, nice. Also nice. Reaper out. Yeah, yeah, the uh, enhanced accuracy on those laser shotties is nice. Though you do pay for it with that four-round battery. Oh, shoot. Hi there. Reaper on left. Trim the hedge. Actually. <laughs> Wib, come on, man. We could have used that. <sighs> My goodness. Not really Wib's fault, it's just RNG being RNG. Hmm, why can we not... There we go. Reaper out. Nice, perfect. Thank you, Indy. Lock back down. Sniper is on Overwatch. Hold. Seb on left. Plus smashing window. So at least one more roaming. Either building on left or building ahead of us.
Focus down, Sab. Hey, there we go. Okay, so Seb had 12 armor. Which means, yeah, we uh, we did about 40 net damage on that shot. That does more or less line up with the, uh, the math we did earlier. 31 base plus 25%. Fall back. Right, right, right. Battery charge already coming back to bite us. Um... All right, slight change of plan. We cannot drop this guy this round, so we'll lock him down and prep for next. Target suppressed. Hug cover. Make sure we're out of line of sight. Right side still clear. And hold. Manted. Oh, nice. Reaper. Thank goodness for that. Okay, okay. We're in good shape. Take him out. Cat Manted, Kill Reaper, Seb's a toss up. Reaper out. Thank you, Jay. Manted capped. Oop. Shield under half. And Manted in sight. Inside building, so can't hit it with indirect. Drop Seb. Nice tag. Less nice. Let's push for cap. Hmm. 45 is a pretty dense chunk of health to stun through, though. Not sure we have enough firepower left. Go for kill. Target out. Which does still leave the mantid over yonder. Hard to say what direction will come at us from, so we'll uh, we'll just take up a defensive posture. Turtle up. 
shields on both sides. Still have one shotty in the mix, so we'll park that behind Punny. With any luck, they'll walk right into it. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, not what I was expecting, but that, that did work out. Though no sign of the mantid, so let's... Let's carefully scout. There it is. Easy kill. Yeah, yeah. Could have gone for cat, but that would have required some pretty generous RNG. That aside, we also don't know if there's still more threats in the area. Right side's been quiet thus far, but that honestly makes me trust it even less. Especially since we do seem to be seeing increasing evidence of Reapers deliberately... deliberately hiding behind cover, trying to stay out of our line of fire. We need to clear these two buildings. We'll have Punny keep eyes on ship while the rest of our crew does that. Building on left is probably fine. Building ahead of us is a bigger question mark. Fields on right are a question mark. In fact, yeah, yeah, building on left is clear. Multiple Reapers falling back onto the ship. Interesting. Also, wobbly Mentark sounds. So Mentark is still active. And building clear. At least, interior. Armed friendly. dead, of course, but at least they died clean. Keep eyes on ship. Still don't trust right, but let's let's start moving clockwise towards ship. This wall gives us a good vantage point on the approaches, so we should be fine. Jay and Indy both need to train up their turn units, but that's that's why they're here. Got to get in that cardio. And they have both uh, they have both landed hits directly contributed to our victory here. 
always a plus. Even Wiv, despite the early whiffs, finally landed that fourth shot. And let us confirm the damage output on our new heavy 40 mil rounds. So, all things considered, this is actually going shockingly well. All quiet. Reapers are staying put. Clear top left. Okay, okay. I think we're good to start our approach. I will say there was uh, there was something almost kind of cinematic about about spotting those reapers just as they were pulling back into the ship, sort of foreshadowing like uh, like an aliens movie. Though, I mean, in our case, obviously, from a strategic standpoint, it means we should really just wait outside until they walk back out and get shot. Which I suppose is slightly less cinematic. But it does keep us alive. That is, of course, assuming that they actually do come back out. I'm assuming they will, but... But if they haven't, by the time we finish our approach, then I guess we'll go in. We have seen some anecdotal signs that they do like to lurk. When they're uh, not within immediate charge range. The restaurant last time around, the uh, the bushes here, they do seem prone to just kind of hovering behind full cover, outside line of sight. But we'll uh, we'll see what they do. Guess that answers that. Yeah, so we'll just hang out here until the other one pops its head out. After that, the only known threats are the Mentark and the Seb officer up top. Though it's possible we also have some non-coms on board. We'll keep an ear on the teleporter sounds.
Mentark moving around. Likely our biggest remaining threat at this point. But the laser shoddies should make short work of it. Just need to make sure it doesn't get the drop on us. Hold. Hold. Oh. Nice. I was not expecting the Mentark to uh, come check the front door. Go for cap. Oh. Manted non com. Noted. Stop that. Mantar cat. Check door. Nice. Though we do still have a Reaper in there, so let's be careful. Especially since those shields are getting pretty thin. So three known threats remaining. Reaper, Manted, Officer. Let's try for the Manta this round. Still there? Okay. Too far into reasonably cap. Let's reposition. We won't rush this round, but we might next. I just don't want to overextend with the Reaper still in the mix. Come on, Sam. Double teleporter. Interesting. Manted may have gone back up. Still 
slight shuffle, then hold. Double teleporter. Reaper in sight. Take it out. Nice. And hold. Breach. That was a pretty long turn for just one mantid. First room clear. Two doors. Let's get a peek. Teleporter. Oh, interesting. There's a dead Seb officer right there. I wonder if the officer can actually die, like the main officer can actually die in a crash. We've never seen it happen before, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. Let's lock down. We'll push the teleporter next round. Thanks, Web. Hold. Three levels. We'll set up around the telepad. Hold for a few more rounds, see if anyone comes down. Right, right. Can't can't move diagonal past blocking terrain. Mantid moving around. Oh! Really, guys? Come on. We had like nine guns at the ready. 
Sorry about that, Rook. Alright, breach. Target in sight. But check six. Huh. That's new. Those those nightmare grapple harnesses. I don't remember seeing those before. Flashbang. Target suppressed. Check corner. Seb non-com. Push for cap. Might just kill the Seb, though. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, bud. Again, we just don't know if there's other threats lurking. Though we certainly can check. Okay, okay. Looks pretty clear. Aside from the cockpit, of course. Let's get a shoddy on the pads, then we'll grab that mantid. for cap. Step off, please. Okay, so I guess their officer did either die in the crash, or it's the officer we killed outside. Either way, that's something new, something I did not realize could happen, but good to know. Got a few medals. Golden stars for Jay and Sam. Very nice. Congratulations, guys. Plus a Distinguished Service Medal for Major Punny. Certainly no minor achievement. Though I do also notice a distressing lack of accuracy bump for Wyvern. <laughs> Though he did make gains in other areas, so I guess that's better than nothing. He'll get there. Aside from that, not much else of note. Decent gains, decent loot. Should be more than enough to net that next upgrade. Okay, come on back. Yeah, they're back. Oh, 
All right. Not too shabby. Honestly, I think, um, although there were some tense moments there, the real struggle today was up in the skies. Our clash with the abductor and the interceptors. Still nine days out on the new dropships, which will be right on payday. I think we're at a good place to call it. We'll hit the pause button for now. We'll get this loot parceled out, the new project going. And uh, not much else to say. We'll pick up here next time. Things are coming along. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who helped make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Eerie V23, Revenant, Eloise, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracid, The Egon Altar, Excelsior, Goat League, James Tremay, Kazor, Mark Jamson, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valen Rook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the Patreon, the PayPal, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description.